Hello and welcome to our review of Marvel United from Cool Many or Not and Spin Master Games. This is a game for 1-4 to four players which must take on the role of a Marvel hero, each with their own unique set of cards and miniatures, working together to stop the evil plans of the villain, Red Skull, Taskmaster and Ultron. Along the way, the villain will draw cards which will trigger effects, move them around the board, spawn minions, um, power up henchmen, spawn civilians and just generally cause havoc. You've got to work together by playing cards, moving around, completing objectives to take down the villain. Each player has a deck of unique cards with powers and abilities. When you play a card, not only will you do your own effects, but you have to copy the effects of the most previously played card in the storyline, allowing for some unique battle tactics. Now I brought this game for two reasons. One, I love Marvel. And two, I really, really like Cool Many or Not. They made some great games, which I've reviewed myself. Cthulhu Death May Die, Hick Ass the Board Game, and Zombicide. So I was really excited for a miniature based game with card based combat and also a really unique art style which this game has. Let's take a look at the components, set up a game and then the gameplay mechanics. Okay, unboxing Marvel United, as you can tell straight away this game has a really unique art style, very cartoony and cutesy looking. It's very unique, very different. Okay, inside we have a really simplistic instruction manual, there's not many pages. This game is actually really easy to learn, it's quite simple. It's only two phases and about three actions you can do on your turn, so it's very, very simple to learn. The game does come with a really great insert. Cool Money and Not Games have a really good knack of making good inserts for their games. Cthulhu Death May Die is one of the best ones, Kick-Ass is a pretty good one too, this is quite similar. As you can see here, the miniatures are nesting quite snug down there on the side, it's quite safe. A nice little overlay here, see-through overlay that comes off. So we have the miniatures for the heroes. So we have we have Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Ant Man, and Wasp. And for the villains, we have Black Skull, Taskmaster, and Ultron. I'm not much of a major painter myself, but I suppose if you wanted to paint these, it'd be quite fun because they're all chunky looking and quite colourful. You can make them quite vibrant and they look quite nice. We also get eight location cards based on infamous Marvel areas, just start Labs, Avengers Tower, the Shield Headquarters, each of their own effects, unique artwork and slots for henchmen and civilians, which you must rescue or defeat. We also have three of the villain cards for Ultron, Red Skull, Tathpaster. Each villain in this game behaves quite differently. There's different strategies, for instance Red Skull here has his own fear meter. A taskmaster can't be take any damage if there's any crisis tokens on any locations and Ultron makes a lot of civilians and henchmen. They each have their own set HP and their own tells you there what the effects do when they move around the board. We also have this little card here which is placed in the middle of the game board, the villain dashboard. You place the objective cards here, the goals, and it also tells you what happens. So when you do one objective, the villain acts after every two cards. When you do two objective, they can now take damage. If you want two, you can do three objectives and you immediately draw an extra card. I'll explain how the objectives work in a second when we go to the gameplay mechanics. We have a lot of tokens here, there's quite a few, I'll put them in bags myself, but uh, we have health tokens, we have the henchman, minion and the crisis tokens, and we also have a bunch of other tokens here, we have general damage tokens, uh, crisis icons and the heroic action tokens here. We also have the objective tokens here, which are placed on the villain dashboard in certain slots, so you keep a track of the objectives. These basically are used to keep track of the objectives in the game. The main mission of the game is to, is to complete objectives and then defeat the villain. Once you've done two objectives at least, you can then start attacking the villain yourself. Until then, you cannot touch the villain. So completing these is a priority. Next up, we have all of the villain cards. Each villain gets their own set of villain cards and threat cards. The villain cards, will, when played, will indicate how the villain moves and certain effects that will happen. Trigger the BAM, BAM effect on the uh, dashboard, spawn henchmen and minions, how many spots they move around. The threat cards are placed on locations, and these give unique sort of actions in each area. They'll spawn either henchmen, they'll uh, spawn minions, they'll spawn drones, such as Ultron clones. They'll each have their own objective. Once you do four of these, you'll get four of the threats. You can then proceed to do one objective. We also get three of the challenge cards for moderate, hard and heroic challenge. These, all these do are they're placed down and they tell you to remove certain cards from the hero decks, generally making the game a bit harder, which is fun if you want to try a bit of a challenge. Next up is the hero cards. Each hero has their own set of unique cards. There are abilities on there, there'll be different artwork, different uh, ability tokens. All these symbols down here are quite simple, there's only about three or four symbols, that some do other effects, such as this one down here. 
And when you play cards, every turn you'll draw a card, you'll play a card from your hand, and then you'll pass the turn. So now we're going to set up a game for two players and explain how the mechanics of the game works. Set up a game is quite simple. First of all, place the villain dashboard in the centre of the game board. Next, choose one of the villains you want to play against. For our first game, we'll pick Red Skull. Flip it to its other side and place it down here. I'll go through the card I'll explain what this means. So this is the health icon, so this tells me here. Based on the number of players, he'll have different health values. So two players have four health, three players have eight health, and four players have 11 health in total. The BAM effect is a special sort of ability keyword on certain cards to tell the villain to move and it'll say BAM. If it says BAM, you do a certain effect here. This one, for instance, tells me to deal one damage to each hero at Red Skull's location and increase his fear track by two. The fear track down here gets increased by certain effects. When it hits 20 for this villain in any way, we lose. The overflow keyword up here means that when we spawn civilians or henchmen at locations, if they can't be added, the spaces are, too, are full, you increase the fear track by one for each token you couldn't add, so each villain has different BAM and overflow abilities. Next up, place your objective cards, in the way you wish, in any order, over here, overlapping the locked objectives. As I said before, objectives are how we defeat the villain, how we win the game. So there's three objectives to do. Clear threats, rescue civilians, and defeat thugs. Cleaning effects is the little threat cards on each location, which must go to, it might tie you to uh, spend hurry actions, or it might be a, a certain minion, or a certain villain to fight. Rescue civilians, with certain civilian tokens on uh, locations, you'll go there, use your hurry action to rescue civilians, when you rescue nine, this is done. And defeat thugs, similar to the civilians, will be thugs around the board on little tokens, once you defeat so many of those, nine, this is gone, that's unlocked, and you can proceed with the game. So the villain acts at every three hero cards, but when you do the fifth objective, he'll get faster, more erratic, fighting stronger, he'll act at every two hero cards. When you do the second objective, he is now vulnerable to damage, so you can now chase the villain and attack him. If you really want to, you can go for the third objective, and it will have to allow each hero to immediately draw one card. Drawing cards this game is pretty good, because if we run out of cards, we get KO'd. Next up, take six random locations and place them around the board. Now you can do this any way you want, you can do this in a circle, I do it in a sort of semi-circle, it's up to you. So I'm going to put these around like so. Two, three, four, five, and six. Each location card has a location card name, the crisis icon symbol in the corner, and an end of turn effect underneath, which is going to be hidden by the threat card. This up here is a slot for henchmen and villains. As I said before, when they overflow, when I can't put any more on there, that'll trigger the overflow effect on the villain. The end of turn effect means once the threat card has been removed, the crisis icon goes, gets up here, that's one threat done. And at the end of our turn, if we're here, we can do end of turn effect. This one here tells me I can swap a card from my hand, one of the cards in the storyline, which is a pretty good, cool little idea. And then we take the Red Skull deck, get the Red Skull cards, put them to the side over here, take the threat cards and randomly place them face up around the board, covering up the bottom section of each location. So for instance, I've got a few, I've got a few uh, henchmen down here. I've got crossbones, I've got Agent of Hydra and Madam Hydra. So you see down here, we have uh, crossbones. So if a villain moves here, triggers the BAM effect, which is on this card here, it'll do two damage to each hero in this location. And we can vent this damage by taking two crash tokens. He has six health, so if we fire to do six damage, this card will go, this crash icon will go up there, one threat done. It can also do the energy effect on the board here. This one up here has no henchmen. But it says here, each henchman in this location requires two damage to be defeated rather than one. The slots here are for heroic actions. The heroic action icon allows you to either rescue a civilian or place one heroic action tile in this slot down here. When you've done three, this threat card is removed, Christ icon goes down there, and to an effect is revealed. Next, we place a henchman and a civilian on each of the location cards in the right slots, and a Christ icon token will pip up things here on each of the location cards. Each player then picks a hero. I'm going to pick Iron Man, Captain America. Place the Red Skull Major on a random location. Let's place him on the Avengers Tower. Place the heroes in an opposite location, which will probably be up here, out the way. Get your hero deck of cards nearby, place them there, shuffle them up. Each player then draws three cards, one, two, three, and you're ready to play.
And now on to the gameplay of Marvel United. There are two turns, the villain turn and the hero turn. On the villain turn, you will draw a card from the master plan deck, place it on the storyline. Storyline is a list of cards along here, it goes from left to right. Results to an effect, it might move the villain around the board, it might spawn henchmen, it might spawn civilians, it might do the same BAM effects here, it might cause overflow effects to happen. On the hero's turn, you'll draw a card, you'll play a card, resolve actions on the card, and resolve any actions to the left of your card. So for instance, on the first turn, if I draw the top card of the Red Skull Master Plan deck and place it to the left of the storyline, it tells me here that he doesn't actually move, but discard all civilians from, all from locations of heroes and do one damage to each of those heroes. So this is gone. We each take one damage. Advance the fear track by a number of civilians discarded this way. So the fear track goes up by one. When you take damage, you'll take a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. If you have no cards in your hand, you are KO'd. So when you're KO'd, lay your hero down, activate the villain's BAM on the location or on the card, and then next turn, stand back up and draw four cards. The heroes win if they manage to defeat two or three objectives at least, and then defeat all the hit points of the villain. The heroes lose if the villain completes the plot on the dashboard, so this plot up here. If you must play a card from Master Plan deck, but the deck's empty. If a hero starts their turn with no cards in their hand. So the game does have a certain clock to it as well. The game is actually really simple. There isn't many um, effects or actions, but it is quite tricky in its execution. So we've had the villain phase, he's done his turn. So now we're going to play the hero card. So let's say Captain America goes first. He's going to draw a card. Look at the cards in his hand. Now there are four types of symbols on the card. There's the move icon, you can move to an adjacent location. There is the deal one damage icon, which can be used to defeat thugs, remove health from a henchman, or remove health from a villain after completing two missions. The rescue civilian will place her action token with this symbol here. And then this symbol is resolve any action. Also, some cards have certain special effects listed. So for instance, on here, this card here tells me I can move one space and deal one damage. So I'm going to play this card to the storyline down here. I can move him to the location and deal one damage. I can either do one damage to the henchman down here, which will go here and help advance this objective, or I could chip away at the health of Madame Hydra. Say I wanted to attack a henchman and place him there. That's my go over. Iron Man's go now. He draws a card. So I've got a card here that has the ability, Power Recharge. So after this, I may draw cards so you have three cards in your hand. So let's say I want Iron Man to play this card here. This lets you do any of the actions, move, attack, or heroic action. This card's placed down here. What this means is I get to use the effects of both cards. So the card I've just played and the cards are left of this card. So on so Captain America's turn, if I play a card after, you get to use the effects of this card and then this card here. It does not matter if a villain's card is in between, whatever card to the left of that card gets used first. So for instance, Iron Man now has the ability to move, attack, and then either move, attack, or heroic reaction again in any order you wish. So for instance, I'm gonna move now. I'm gonna use the heroic action to rescue a civilian. And then I'm gonna use the attack action to deal one damage to Madame Hydra placing a health token on there. After the third hero card is played, another master plot card is played down here, and the sat hook is long again. You'll play villain cards, hero cards, back and forth, until either the heroes win or the villain wins. Once I've completed two of the three objectives, I've either cleared the threats, these cards have been removed, or rescued nine civilians or defeated nine, nine uh, thugs in any order, the villain can now take damage. You do this in the same way as you would attacking any henchmen or any uh, minions. Move to the location the villain is at and then perform an attack action to deal damage. When you do enough damage to defeat the villain, the heroes win the game. So final thoughts for Marvel United. Despite being a really simplistic game and quite innocent looking, it can be quite tough and brutal. It is quite difficult. The villains can be quite tricky. But the storyline idea at the bottom down there and the seven heroes with unique decks each playing quite differently Maybe some great replayability, the villains all behave differently too. Each hero having their own unique cards and the storyline idea at the bottom of the, the game board, allowing you to link cards together and uh, plan with your friends when you're playing. It's a really great idea, I like that about this game a lot. 
The matrix is a great quality, the cards are really good quality too. The insert is fantastic. It has a really good solo mode too, where you basically play as a three heroes and you have five cards out of three. If you run out of cards, you lose, and it can be quite tricky and quite challenging. Plus, the three challenge cards for difficulties make it quite hard as well. You can also get a really cool achievement guide off a Cool Money or Not for this game with a little achievement list. It's quite a, a neat idea. It's a very short game, setup time is really short. Uh, play time takes roughly between 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes, top depending on the players and if you're new to the game. Despite it being quite challenging, it is quite simplistic. The strategy elements are there, but isn't too much really to uh, make you want to scratch your head and really back and forth. There's only been sort of three main abilities, move, attack and heroic action. It is quite a simple game, but the beauty in this game is simplicity. If you're looking for something that's quite light, that's quite sort of family friendly, but has that nice Marvel uh, tag on it and the theme, it's a great game to invite people in to play board games like this because it's such a simple game. Um, fans of Marvel Universe will like it too, and plus this game has a really great roster of expansions released for this. I mean, the Fancy Gold Learns, the Spider Verse, the Guardians pack has a lot, plus extra lot of character content too. I've, I've seen Halle and Modok, and because it's such an easy game to get used to, any player can find certain things they like, certain heroes and villains add to the game. And lastly, Marvel United is a fun, light-hearted strategy game for one to four players that is enjoyable for all ages. It's colourful and vibrant, easy to get into, has a slight strategy element to it as well. And I give this game a nice, solid 7 out of 10. I knock a few points off because although it does have a bit of strategy to it, the actions are quite simple. There's only move, attack and heroic action. If the cards have a few more actions on them, a few more abilities, I give it a higher points because although the strategy is there, it could have been more. It could have been slightly more advanced and got a slight higher score, but still 7 out of 10 is a great score. Let me know in the comments down below if you have this game or you plan on getting this game. Any questions about this game, feel free to ask. As always, like, subscribe and thanks for watching.